Hey there everyone, I am Lauren Jackson, an APQS sales representative and educator, and I'm here to talk to you today about choosing the right tools for your quilt top. Today I wanna to get started talking about rulers. Um, it can be really difficult to kind of um, have a good toolbox of rulers to use, largely because rulers are so expensive. So you wanna make sure that you're buying something that you're going to grow into, as opposed to buying something that you're going to grow out of. And having a good toolbox can ensure that you can get the most done on your projects as possible. All right, so let's talk about um, the different kinds of rulers that we have available to us to see what might suit our fancy. Now, first things first, when you have rulers, in order to be successful with them, you wanna make sure that you invest in some kind of ruler grip tape. I like the kind that looks pretty clear. It's like a um, little grip tape, kind of feels like sandpaper, clear sandpaper, but it's uh, semi-transparent so you can see through it and I can still see my ditch lines and stuff. I tend to put rulers where my power position is. So either where my fingers are going to, to hold down or in the corners of my rulers to help them from shifting and moving. Without ruler grip, you can see that the ruler can move around quite easily. So if your ruler doesn't have any ruler grip on it, and some people like it that way, and that's okay, you're gonna end up having to put more pressure down on your hand so that when you're moving your alarm quilting machine, there's actually more pressure on the table underneath. And then as a result, you have to put more pressure on your hand to move your machine. So it becomes a very cumbersome process and it becomes harder to deal with uh, when you're learning to use your rulers. So if you can put something on there that helps limit the slide of your ruler so that you can have more control and you don't have to put as much pressure down, you're really gonna ease up on your joints on your hand and the amount of pressure and force that you have to push on your machine as you're quilting. I sometimes put so much pressure on my ruler I can hear it squeaking along the side of my ruler foot when I'm using it. So make sure that you get some good ruler grip or ruler magic or something to that extent. This is just a little glue that you can dab on and put on your ruler. It does start to get linty and a little harder to see through, uh, but you can rinse it off with like Dawn Blue dish soap and then put another dab on again. Same rules apply, put the uh, ruler magic wherever you think that the power position of your hands are going to be when you're quilting. The ruler magic can be especially helpful when you're using large or, or odd shaped rulers um, because it actually is so grippy when you're using it. But it's a little more cumbersome to have to wash off and put back on and off again. I often use it when I'm gonna be doing big quilting designs and borders with my bigger rulers. Okay, other things that you want to consider when you're getting rulers are the types of acrylic and the simplicity or the confusion <laughs> with which the rulers are designed. So this is an example of a really simple ruler, one that might come with your machine or with your ruler base, uh, wherever you might purchase them. This is a Hartley ruler. This is fantastic for stitching in the ditch, but it doesn't have any other marking lines on it to allow me to kind of measure my distances and stitch with confidence without having to mark all of those lines on my quilt top. Now, if you're someone who needs symmetry and you want it to all be um, very uniform, quilting with this kind of ruler may not be helpful for you because you can't measure and map. You'd actually have to do all of that uh, before you take the quilt to the long arm, which in and of itself can kind of be a cumbersome process, but can yield some really amazing results. So make sure you get rulers that you can grow into. Um, so ones with no markings are really great, again, like I said, for stitch in the ditch, but they become harder to use for multiple types of ruler work designs. So um, then you can get rulers that have a good bit of markings on them. So hopefully you can see all of these. So we have got um, a lot of different markings. We have, it goes quarter inch markings on the very bottom from zero to nine inches. Um, and so it allows me to kind of measure map and mark right at my quilt top if I want to. I've got all kinds of ruler degree markings, okay? 75, 60, 45, 30, 90 in the middle, 30, 45, 60, 75, all right? Because, and you notice that all of these uh, angled markings meet up in the middle, and that's because the power position of our hand is in the middle. So when we're lining these up, we wanna make sure that we have the most control over the main part of our ruler. And so we want our lines to kind of branch out from our main power position outwards so that we have the most control over our ruler. Next, you wanna make sure that your ruler has some kind of markings to indicate how big your lines are that you're stitching on. 
If you don't know, your needle sits directly in the middle of your ruler foot, so it is a quarter inch away from the side of your ruler. Every etched line on most rulers is a quarter of an inch away, and that's because it gives you even spacing, just like from the needle in the middle of your foot to the edge of your ruler. So this ruler actually starts at one half inch at its first quarter inch line. That's because the needle on the ruler foot to the edge of the ruler is a quarter of an inch. And then if I line up this first line, that makes my stitch line a half of an inch if I line this up with my ditch. And then so on and so forth for everything. So it goes one half inch, three quarters inch, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, and one and three quarters. If I were measuring on paper, that would be wrong. But because I'm doing quilt math with my needle in my uh, ruler foot, that's going to be proper measurement. So being able to do the math without having to do the math is fantastic because I know if I want a half inch border on something, I'm going to line up this first line with my ditch and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch and that's going to give me a half of an inch around. Now there are rulers that you can get that honestly they've got lines going upside down crisscross and sideways and they don't specify if they're a certain degree marking if they're 45 or 30 there's no um, you know math markings on the side that allow you to know if I line up this line with my ditch and then my needle how wide is that getting me so this way I don't have to mark my rulers to be able to remember what line I'm on I know I'm gonna stitch a half inch border or a three quarter inch border or a one inch border and I know where I'm going from there so make sure that again you get something that you can grow into now, when it comes to rulers with handles, you can see we've got two very different handles. This one is very thin and skinny, and it's on the 45, okay? And this one is uh, big and fat, and it's in the middle of the quilt top, which is fantastic because that's where the power position of your hand is. But you have to decide if the way that you're holding the ruler is going to be ergonomic for you, if you're gonna hold it um, with your fingertips, how your hand would feel around that, okay? and how you'd feel comfortable. I think I'd probably feel most comfortable, I don't know, maybe holding it like this. But you gotta see where it's gonna feel comfortable. The cool thing about it is this knob can be kind of a dual use. You can use it as a sit down quilter or a stand up quilter and it can help you kind of hold the ruler in place so that the knob keeps it right in your hand pocket so that it's not going anywhere. So it's like a, it's almost like having a ruler handle, right? <laughs> that you can use not just as a handle, but as something that allows you to have better grip when you're quilting. Now this handle um, you couldn't use as a sit down quilter because you can't actually hold down your fabric and the ruler to push your fabric around. You could only use it for long arm quilting where you're standing up so that it gives you a nice ergonomic position with your wrist in relation to the rest of your hand. It takes the pressure off your center, your, your first knuckles, and kind of puts it into your hand and into your wrist, so it distributes it evenly um, as you're quilting, okay? So you have to decide if being able to hold the ruler in different quilt positions. I like to hold it with two hands like this, that feels comfortable for me, um, or with three fingers, or from the front with three fingers and two in the back, and that kind of just keeps it from sliding. Again, the proper ruler grip can be really helpful with that. Now, aside from that, I sometimes don't put ruler grip on some of my rulers. So this is my little baby ruler. It is exactly like my bigger ruler that I have. It has all the same markings. It goes from one half inch to one and three quarters inch and it's got all the markings on the bottom, all the degree lines from the center, and I'm able to use it in just the same way. But I oftentimes don't put ruler grip on my little one because I like to use it to go around applique. And so I really can just kind of like rock it around as I'm quilting and it allows me to have control, but it's not so big that it's getting caught up on other puffy, unquilted areas on my quilt top um, where it can kind of get caught on a seam here and there. So it's nice to have something little that floats and that can be um, something that I don't have to put a whole lot of pressure down on the quilt top or have to have a lot of control because all of the control is right where my hand is and that's over the entire surface of the ruler. So sometimes little rulers can be really convenient in that way. So that's kind of what I would look for in a straight edge. You do want to make sure that your etched lines are um, in all of your rulers, and that's because when they are etched, they're not going to rub off from your hand oils or from constant friction as you're quilting, whereas if they are painted on, they are more likely to rub off and degrade over time. And again, this is a big investment, so you want to make sure that whatever you're investing in is going to last the test of time. You can also get various kinds of shape rulers. So you can get 
external shape rulers, okay? With an external shape ruler, you're going to use your ruler foot and guide it with your machine around the edge of the ruler. But because, let's say this is a long arm quilting machine, right? So you have to, the front would be oriented in the same way. So you kind of have to push, 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 pull, 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 pull. Change your hand position. Push, 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 push until you finish. So you have to really think about that as you're going around to keep the pressure around the center of the shape um, to ensure that you're going uh, right around it just the way that you should, okay? And it is so easy for you to kind of do your quilting and go whoop and quilt and kind of come out of it. These are for confident quilters that feel comfortable um, using their machines and have more control, but for those of us who are just beginning, okay, that's interesting. For those of us that are just beginning, you can get internal shapes that allow you to kind of pull, 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 push, 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 and that's all you have to think about. You don't have to think about going outside of it because I'm able to quilt within it. All right, so the internal shapes can be fantastic because it's like you're getting a greater chance of success being able to facilitate the design. And of course, if you can get yourself a puzzle ruler, they'll fit around all makes and models of machines um, to be able to get them to fit with your quilting foot apparatus that you have, okay? So that's kind of the difference between an external and an internal. External designs can be fantastic for kind of building on the shapes, maybe doing curved cross hatching or different things. Internal designs can be a little bit harder to stack within unless you have good markings on your rulers. But one good curved ruler and one good straight ruler is a fantastic, um, a fantastic thing to start out with. You can get internal shapes in all different kind of shapes and you have to decide if those are something that are going to work for you. Are you gonna use rounded squares? Could you use those rounded squares as rounded triangles, right? Can I use the external portion of this? Does it have uh, markings for me to be able to build on and to do other designs? And you know, do I see myself using this ruler? So those are all things that you really have to ask yourself before you get in there and start quilting. Oh, and I need this one. Another really good ruler, okay, that gives you a good bang for your buck is called a nested ruler. I love nested rulers because they often cost a lot less in comparison to be able to use, but they can can be a little more cumbersome because you have all of these teeny tiny pieces and how are you gonna hold that to go or put your long arm around? Well, the answer to that is you build on it. So if I'm going to use this size circle, I'm gonna put all the circles in the middle in it too, and then I'm gonna use my foot and go around and use it like a much bigger template so that my hands have something to hold on to. But again, nested circles can be really amazing because they allow you to get a really good bang for your buck. And this one is a quilter's rule something. Um, and it is, you know, a quarter of an inch thick. I can use it on my long arm quilting machine and it goes from one and a half inches all the way out to six and a half inches. And it even has a pretty sweet little hangy thing, right? So storage and organization might play a role in the different kinds of rulers that you pick up as well. So just consider that when you're thinking about external and internal templates. And then also for those of us who have different kinds of machines, the rulers that have that quarter inch slit that they have to go within I used to have one for my circle rulers. And wherever the quarter inch slit was, I'd get in there and I'd quilt, but as I pass it, I'd get a little bloop with my ruler foot. And so my circles would never be perfectly circle and that would always drive me crazy. So I like the idea of a completely enclosed circle for me to be able to work with. And these are just things I want you to consider as you're looking to add rulers to your toolbox for quilting. Now, because one good curved ruler and one good straight ruler can take you a, a long way, you wanna make sure that you have the proper marking lines on your rulers, okay? So you can see here that we have 45 and 90 degree marking lines, and then we have one quarter inch marking lines, three sets of them from the top, and one, two, three sets of them from the bottom. The cool thing about this curved ruler is that I am able to get the same degree curve on the outside as I do on the inside. So as I'm working something like a 
um, double wedding ring or something like that, I'm able to use my same holding hand to do one direction and then I can turn it around, spin it around and use the same holding hand to go the other direction with the inside portion of my curve. Lots of people will flip and flop their rulers over and what actually happens is your lines are made to be pushed against the quilt top because if they are above the quilt top and you move your body side to side, that line is subjective and it moves off the ditch both ways depending on where you're putting it. Okay, so ensure that you have those good lines and again, having a curve ruler that has both an inner and outer can go a really long way. Then we've got, um, so like this is like a multi-tool because I have an inner circle design so I can use all three of these as circles. They've got 45, 90 degrees, I can line them up, get straight lines, string of pearls, use them in borders, they're fantastic. Um, but it also has the same kind of marking lines as this curved ruler. I've got my 90 degree line and the newest version of this is out and it's got a 45 degree line on either side and we have um, the quarter inch marking line so I can do curved cross hatching work but I can only do it you know one way and then the other way and so I have to kind of by doing this the other way see how I wasn't able to use the other side of my curve I now have to use a different hand to hold it okay so you have to decide what is going to feel convenient to you so now that I've kind of explained the ins and outs of like things that can really help you with choosing your rulers. Let's take a look at kind of how the rulers are used so that this all kind of makes a little bit more sense. Now, if you wanna do a curved cross hatching or something to that effect, having a curved ruler with multiple lines can be really helpful. So I'm gonna stick my um, curved ruler. It's not gonna be perfect because I didn't mark a cross hatch all the way across, but I'm gonna use my third line and I'm gonna line that up with my ditch. So that third line is sitting right on my ditch and I'm gonna quilt from one side to the other and I'm gonna put my curved ruler on my previous stitch line. I'm gonna stitch from one side to the other. Okay, we're gonna keep going here. So I can get really even spacing without having to actually mark my quilt top, but I can use my ruler. I would stitch in the ditch to go up and come over to get those same consistent lines. When I run into the ditch, I would stitch down the ditch until I need to get the other way, okay? So then we ended up over here and we're gonna do the same thing right in the middle, third line. So I can get that simple curved cross hatching design and I get it consistent without having to mark anything on my quilt. And that's because I have an amazing ruler that I can use to do that. Oh, I don't think I did three lines. Okay. All right. So see how simple that was with just a good curved ruler that allowed me to have the proper spacing. I was able to do all of that, even though I faux pod that just a little bit uh, without having to mark my quilt at all. All right. And so when in doubt, if I'm getting from one to the other, I'm obviously going to go up my ditch line. So that can be really helpful. That's why those lines matter. So if we're using one of our rulers with degree markings, so it can allow me to do this is one of my favorite things to do. I actually like to do different uh, diagonals of curves. So if I switch my ruler to the other side and do 30 degrees, okay, and then I can go off one of my other lines and do 60 degrees. I can get some really cool, but very consistent looking angled lines in what I'm doing. And the ruler can allow me to do more with what I'm working with. And you can kind of separate it and do other ones. Now, this first quarter inch line, if I line it up with this previously stitched line, I can get consistent quarter inch seams or half inch. Okay, and I can stitch those out consistently as well. And that's what all of those lines are for, really. And let's say, like, this one has markings from zero to nine at the quarter inch. If I measured this block, it's six inches. I can then mark at the, where's the three inch? I can then mark at the three inch mark 
where my middle is. This block I'm measuring side to side, it's eight inches, so I can mark at the middle where my four inches. And from side to side, ooh, that is not six inches like the other one. I didn't go out far enough. It's like five and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go to two and a half plus an eighth. And that's my middle, okay? It's a wonky middle, but that's where I'm at. So it was easy enough to kind of mark and divide my space so that I could put, you know, different line designs in there. So we'll do, you know, like a Zelda design, a triangle and a triangle. You can even do it for arrow designs. And this is where having rulers with good markings can be really helpful because you'd be able to kind of keep everything in line the way that it should be. Alrighty, so let's take a look at kind of how you'd facilitate a circular design. So again, it's push, push, push. You gotta move your hand around and then finish. So it's able to kind of go around. This particular ruler has eighth inch marking lines. So if I wanted to do like a border line, a border design, I could kind of build on those and do something interesting if I wanted to. And the cool thing is that you can really just experiment and play with your uh, ruler designs to do different things. And you don't have to think too hard about it. You can just practice and play with it. And it can be a lot of fun. Alrighty. And then for the internal one, same kind of thing. We could set up, let's say this is our sashing. Where is my, I don't know where my other thing is. But let's say that this is kind of the middle. When you're using one of these shape templates, okay, and they have 45 degree lines, if you line up the tips of them, even on a curve, you would be able to facilitate an interesting shape. But see how the ruler markings are allowing me to kind of go through and keep all of my hexagon centered, but also on that curve because it's got that 90 and the 45 degree lines. You could do the same thing with just one half of it on the outside. And you can keep a consistent sizing of the hexagons by keeping both of the 90 degree marking lines on your ditch line so that you can kind of keep them all the same height in the same place. All right, so just knowing what to look for when you're shopping and purchasing your tools is a huge thing. And then knowing how to kind of use and implement those tools are really great as well. You wanna make sure that you can find a company with rulers that allow you to watch videos and tutorials so that you have ideas and inspiration for what you wanna do with them going forward. So I hope that this was really helpful for you um, and that when you go to shop rulers, you look for rulers with really good marking lines um, and different variations that will allow you to kind of play around and have some fun. Alrighty. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I'm Lauren Jackson with APQS and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up so that more people will see it in the YouTube algorithm. And please be sure to give it a subscribe um, up above if you like the content that we provide from this channel. So that way when we put out new information, you are able to see it. Also, feel free to share with your Facebook friends. Just click the little share arrow and you can share it on your Facebook page so that more people can see this information and benefit from the information as you have. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, I'm Lauren Jackson with ABQS and I'm so happy that you are here with us today. Take care and happy quilting, y'all. Bye.